We have, have quite a lot of deserted wives, and we do have two deserted gentlemen with families to rear, and it does say that there's a big problem. When I fell, well, I went head first, and I had a scar all down there. Now, this piece of public land on the very foreshores of our area belongs to the people. Yet since they've built these motels, they've developed this public land as if it really belongs to the motel. We've had clotheslines pinched, we've had garbage littered everywhere. I spoke to Mr Waitley on Thursday, he said, that's not my worry, get the action group to do something about it. Well, I don't think much of our Newcastle City Council, because I've known Newcastle for 74 years. I wouldn't say it's called Newcastle today, they're just dumping our old people out. Like most rapidly developing countries, Australia is beginning to experience future shock, a state of mind which comes about when people feel that they matter less than the rapid changes they see around them. One way out of this problem is for people to be encouraged and helped to have a say in what happens in their communities. Many community problems spring from inequalities built into our system, as shown in a recent study of the city of Newcastle by Dr Tony Vinson. Well, the study was intended to test some long-standing assumptions about delinquency, especially the idea that delinquency is concentrated somehow within the individual and has nothing to do with the community. So what we did was to take uh, an Australian city, a fairly typical one, and look at the distribution of various kinds of problems, starting from the womb onwards in life, things like infant mortality, uh, premature birth, divorce and separation, mental illness, unemployment, these are many other indices of that kind. And what we did was to look at their distribution over the city and chart it. And in this way here, we've tried to represent it by showing the height of the problem in each of 75 areas within the city. And then we went back and we asked, and what about delinquency and crime? And we found a very close correspondence. Delinquency tends to go with these other problems in life. Following the figures that he came up with for what we call at-risk inverted commas areas, uh, it was felt that it was no good of having a heap of u butte statistics if no one would do anything about them. So following this, uh, it was decided that uh, efforts would be made to have somebody working back in the community, uh, the object being to, if, uh, to put it crudely, to stir the community, to make them get up off their backsides and do something. People working out their own social needs and priorities, and then taking some real control over what happens in their communities. This is the point of the Australian Assistance Plan. The Hunter region, of which Newcastle is part, is one of the first areas where the Australian Assistance Plan is being put into practice. This film shows how the Australian Assistance Plan encourages and helps community action groups to get full advantage from official agencies and government funds. This voluntary community development group has already done work in social problem areas highlighted by Dr Vinson's report. Now they have the additional task of getting the Australian Assistance Plan going by appointing a social planner for the Hunter region. And the whole focal point of tonight will be uh, to receive the report from Dr McAlden on the selection committee. The unanimous recommendation of the committee was that Mrs Susan Hellyer should be appointed to the position of Director of Social Planning in the Hunter region. We're sorry to lose you as a uh, chairman, but I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the group uh, as our regional planner. and what are you going to try and do? Uh, my role as social planner, uh, working through the development group, will be to actually coordinate the existing services and innovate the development of new services in terms of what the needs of the people in the region seem to be. So far, what's the reaction you've had from within the Hunter area to it? Tremendous enthusiasm, I would say. Uh, we've had a lot of approaches from service clubs, local councils, local welfare organisations and residents groups. Um, all saying, you know, can we be involved in the Australian Assistance Plan, telling us a bit about the projects they've got in mind and the needs of their area. And it's uh, not going to be all that much difficult a task to actually get people together discussing this with each other. Uh, will you be cutting across at all the work of these other organisations or will you be involving what they're already doing in your own work? The latter, very much. I'd, I'd aim to involve... Um, existing organisations in the planning process rather than cut across anything. Um, the aim is that um, where needs aren't already being fulfilled, um, we consult already existing organisations and local groups 
as to how they would like these needs to be met. If we could sort of, you know, get into specifics on that, uh, you do have a group operating, I think, at uh, Dixon Park. Well, now, what are these people trying to do, you know, once they form groups? What are they trying to do to improve their own standards and their own way of life? Uh, well, the first thing they're doing is talking about their experiences living in that environment mm. and the sorts of things they're a bit dissatisfied with and would like to see improved. Mm. Uh, a lot of them are very basic physical facilities that perhaps a lot of people would take for granted. The main worry is the pedestrian crossing. Well, I'd suggest the mothers at a, the particular place where the children cross, where they walk backwards and forwards with banners, uh, suggesting that we want to stop, that children are in danger of being killed, which is not, uh, you know, it's not too much to say, um, because there's a great danger there. We need three crossings, we've asked for them, but they don't consider it busy enough. Well, uh, mothers marching backwards and forwards and stopping the traffic from holding traffic up. It would bring the traffic people down. So with all these flats, these four are here, they're going to have children, and there's going to be children going to the school, so I'd say they'd want a crossing. Oh yeah, be safer. For, for the sake of the kids, be a hell of a lot safer for them. This is from Newcastle Council. It's proposed formation of park committee. I acknowledge the receipt of your letter dated 18th of May 1974 concerns the proposal to form a park committee for the purpose of developing Dixon Park. That's the place just outside. Well, I think they should have somewhere where it's open, like a, an ordinary park. We're here, if I was to let him come down here on his own, he'd either finish up getting killed or break his neck falling down the stairs. Because there's nowhere, even just, if they made just one flat available for little ones, that they could sit and play. Because he's, um, I'll let him go out and play then. Troy, run and grab your brother, he's off up the stairs. Run and Don't move, son. Oh, well, uh, I feel, you know, that there's a need for the, to make some facilities for the kids to play because, uh, particularly in the rainy weather, if you don't keep them locked up in the flats, they can't go outside in the rain and they're in the corridors, which is where all the excess noise is coming from. This um, committee now for the... Um, oh, there's some organisation here amongst them. Are you a member of the committee? No, I'm not. Do you think it would be a good thing if you joined? Oh, I don't think I've got enough push behind me, kind of thing, but still. The tenants, the existing tenants, they, uh, they've been approached several times. They, they were asked to the first meetings and there was only the few that are here now who turned up. And we sent circulars out to them, the minutes of the, that first meeting to see what it interests them. You know, it told them what we had planned, to, to the plans that which we had. But nobody, nobody, they just aren't interested. Well, people, well, they've all got problems, but there's a certain number that just aren't interested in getting anything done about it. They're not interested in helping themselves. You've virtually got to do everything and sort of... Apparently they'll uh, accept the things that we're fighting to get for them, but they, they don't want to have any... They just don't want to be bothered. Fatalism, a feeling of powerlessness, inability to, inability to do anything about the problems. These are the things that are characteristic of the people caught with the problems. Whereas people in other parts of the city are more inclined to say, I've got a problem, I'll do something to solve it. Now, that creates a demand for welfare services, which I think uh, planning councils and so on will have to be very careful to observe. What you find is that the people living in areas with high rates of problems, high rates of delinquency, they tend to look to short-term solutions. In other words, they're asking for relief, material aid. The people in the other parts of the city are more inclined to seize upon the growth-promoting change-type services to get themselves out of these difficulties. The battle against apathy, getting people concerned and active, is the social planner's primary role. One of the areas Sue Hellyer has been working in is Wickham, a poor, underprivileged inner city suburb. The Newcastle Community Development Group started its first project here at Wickham Primary School. Um, it is an after-school centre aimed at stimulating the kids after school hours who would otherwise go home with no provision for doing homework, playing except in the streets, getting into trouble. It runs three days a week from 3.30 to 5 approximately. The children decide what activities they want to do. They choose arts, the majority of them. 
they do sport, trampolining, vaulting, craft. They make all sorts of things using egg cartons and they use old tiles that they um, create patterns out of. I just don't know how it helps, but there's something about it that does help children because, well, it's helped him. He gets to try knives and try to jump out of windows and all. Well, I've had none of this problem since he's been going to the afternoon school. Funding is a problem. Uh, we started off just trying to get as many materials donated locally by local firms as possible and we also rely on school materials and try and reimburse the school. Unfortunately, it's got to the stage now where we've had to apply for further grants from the Schools Commission and the Arts Council to keep going. Materials just couldn't be gathered by volunteers to keep up the demand. I would see the AAP promoting projects like this that are new innovations, really, in comparison with what's been offered to school children in the past. I would see that they would encourage local community groups all over the Hunter Valley region, for instance, to um, think about setting up this sort of thing. But it certainly does flounder on a purely voluntary basis, and I would see the AAP as having to provide money not only for materials, but for, for um, paid assistance to, to supervise the activities in the after-school centre and to liaise with the education department and all the authorities that, that could help. Some rural communities have been quick to respond to the Australian Assistance Plan. The first important step for a community is to set up a community development group. The Shire Clark of Gloucester, a small country town in the Hunter region, has invited Sue Hellier and Brian Brinley to advise on setting up a community development group for Gloucester. We feel at this stage that uh, we need a committee to advise us in more detail about in what actual direction we're going. Yeah, you know all about the Australian Assistance Plan. I gather you've certainly read up on that, have you? Yes, I have, and um, I have got copies prepared ready to uh, distribute to our committee. And in fact, I have prepared a summary of the plan, um, hoping that um, all committee members will read it thoroughly before we have our inaugural meeting. Sue Hellier's job is a demanding one. As regional planner, she is helping communities all over the Hunter region to establish community development groups. All these groups will eventually combine to form a regional council under the Australian Assistance Plan. Money from the Australian government at a rate of up to $2 per head per year will be administered by the council. Maitland, a large country town on the Hunter River, is well advanced in setting up its community development group and has now drafted a constitution. It might be short a bit, but... Uh, uh, the strength or weakness of this constitution is going to be very important in future years when perhaps this group is looking for assistance and for funds, and we've got to be able to establish two all appropriate authorities that we're properly founded and we're on a proper basis. When I first became aware of the plan, the thing that uh, uh, struck my mind most uh, was the fact that uh, the Commonwealth Government was prepared to subsidise social welfare in our region at the rate of two dollars per head of population. Now that's a million dollars a year we're not getting now. Uh, that's basically what I look at it. Uh, for I can see that there is going to be a million dollars worth of social welfare coming into this Hunter region for the benefit of this region and the people who live in it that we're not getting now. That's why I'm supporting it and that's why I believe that it's a great thing. The Maitland Community Development Group, like other groups in the region, will establish its own needs and priorities. But the Regional Council will make the final decisions about how the annual grant will be split up. One area may get more than another, but this will be because its needs are greater. More importantly, the Australian Assistance Plan will guide people in making better use of the full range of government initiatives and support. Windale, a housing commission suburb on the outskirts of Newcastle, has few frills and almost no social amenities. With many working single parents in the community, the most keenly felt need is for a child care centre. Don Spence of the Windale Progress Association 
meet Sue Hillier on the proposed building site. Well, Don, how did your meeting on child care centre go last night? Well, not very good, Sue. We didn't get a good turn up from the community. We got nobody to attend from the Lake Macquarie Shire Council, as requested. Well, at least we've got a success with the Neighbourhood Health Centre yes. that's beginning to be built. That's very pleasing, but we don't know where to go now to, uh, for our child care. This is a problem. Mm. Well, I, I, as I mentioned to you once before, the, the child care committee that actually plans child care centres is going to plan a visit up in this Hunter area and visit most of the councils soon. And I suggest that we tell them what's happening and, and ask them to try and talk the council into supporting this or child care centre. Or pressing the council, yeah. the council into doing something that they should. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's really... It, Windale's going to miss out. If the community hasn't got enough um, resources to back their child care centre up, then the yeah. council really has to provide one. Yes, yes. That's how I see it. Mm. Under the Australian Assistance Plan, it is the social planner's responsibility to help citizens call for better deals from all levels of government. The Windale Progress Association meets at the Assembly Hall. General disinterest from residents and apathy from official bodies seem to present insurmountable problems. We did ask that the uh, Shire President and the representative of the, uh, or a member at least of the staff of the council uh, attended the, tonight's meeting so that they could explain to us what the council's position is on the, um, in regard to uh, child minding centres. Well, they haven't acknowledged my letter, but I did ring the uh, president's secretary today and she said that the president had a uh, previous engagement tonight, but wasn't able to get any representative to attend on his behalf or on the uh, staff's behalf. And uh, we don't get no reply or at least the courtesy of sending somebody along here to tell us what's going on, whether they want to come to the party or not. We still have this problem of contact with the various departments. We, our original approach was through the Lake Macquarie Shire Council, and they, of course, come back and said that they didn't have the finance, and it wasn't their particular problems. We then went to the state government, and we received replies back from particular members and to the effect that they have insufficient money or they are looking into the matter and this is now on two years. Two years. Because nobody will make a commitment that they're going to do something in the area. Uh, there was a comment made about youth and we requested that our police boys club type of complex was formed for young people in the community and uh, insufficient funds were available for that and we've made several requests for a coffee shop style uh, of meeting place for young people where they'd be under supervision and uh, they'd be with their own group and have things in common with one another and uh, we've received no satisfaction about that and our youth are still meeting on the street because they have no facilities whatsoever where they can meet in a proper manner. And uh, I think it's unfair. If they had those facilities, we wouldn't have problems with our young people. And I think they deserve it. Um, what prospects do you see of uh, these, your hopes uh, being met? None. <coughs> One man who is familiar with the problems of youth is Bill Plazier of the Newcastle Youth Service. We're reaching now a lot of young people that even if you give them the opportunity to do what they want to do, they don't know what they want to do. Um, you know, there's been numerous uh, coffee shops, discotheques, and all sorts of things that they've wanted originally and that have failed for lack of support, for lack of young people wanting to do something. But if you get these same youngsters that are out there saying, I have nothing to do, and then you say, well, what do you want to do? They all say, I don't know. It's getting to a stage of being pathologically bored where they've done everything to be done by 18 and just don't know what they want to do. I 
I wish I knew what they wanted to do. Young people do have problems, but most of the problems uh, are usually symptoms of, you know, a dysfunctioning family. Uh, need for attention, need for care, need for love, need for, you know, a lot of other things. I think that the family unit is fast breaking down, and uh, this in itself is creating a problem in that where the youngster was prior to this able to function within his family and get the support and the the attention and all the other things, the care that he needed. Uh, that family's not there now, that, and the, those youngsters are now needing to come out and get it somewhere else. And they do get it out on the streets. And when you see regularly out on the streets on a Friday or Saturday nights and even through the week, youngsters 12 years, 13, 14 years old, and sometimes younger, uh, up to 12 o'clock and later, when you say to them, does your mother know? They usually say something like, oh, they gave us the money to get out, or, you know, uh, mother's busy doing something else, or she's out at housey, or she's out playing the poker machines, or maybe even out working. You know, you've got a large group of kids out on the streets whose parents literally don't care. Family breakdown, boredom, violence. Many problems now surfacing in our fast-changing society have no instant solutions. But there are people in the community like Bill Plazier who are trying to find some answers. Now, the Australian Assistance Plan will be able to help finance their efforts. You know, we've often heard the phrase unreachable young people, uh, and I've yet to meet them. Unreachable parents, yes. You know, they're set in their ways, they're rigid, a lot of them. But not young people, I find that not only are they willing to come and talk to you about their problems, but will accept that their parents have problems. There is something that's formed recently in Newcastle called the Newcastle Learning Exchange. Some of the students are doing teachers college or university and others are working and are interested in the lack of, of recreational facilities for this age group in Newcastle. They're concerned to have self-help groups around certain creative activities like art and music and drama and motorbike assembly and repair work, mm -hmm. all sorts of things. And they're actually looking for funds at the moment and they're having a concert on Sunday that their musical segment is putting on. Basically, we're having the rock concert to cover overheads that we previously had in putting the New Newcastle Learning Exchange together. Also, we're using it as an attempt for the kids to relate to the fact that Newcastle Learning Exchange is fun and learning eventually, we hope that they'll uh, recognise that learning itself is fun. And thirdly, so that we can get money so that we can perhaps rent premises uh, for the Learning Exchange to set up a shop front activity. This is Pete Lee and 2KO getting with local boy Russell McDougall. See and meet Russell McDougall at the Newcastle Learning Exchange Concert. Support the concert and you'll support a new youth movement. Newcastle Learning Exchange Concert at the Hunter Theatre starts one o'clock. It's on this Sunday. Let me see before I thought that I love you very much. Now the good God stands free. The pressing problem for urban communities is the way property development tends to put people out of their homes where they've always lived. Newcastle's East End, situated between the Hunter River and the sea, now faces redevelopment and the local residents don't like it. I've been born in the house, I live in now, 60 years ago. My family's been in the house 60, uh, 66 years coming up. Oh, I've lived here the greatest part of 50 years. Yeah. Now there used to be a about eight houses that people used to live in, like big families too. They're gone, so they're just pushed out the road. 
in my opinion, uh, they try to cancel border for their own the council are, 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 uh, are making an estate agent of theirself in that they're uh, trying to worry all there's a terrible lot of widows up here and they're trying to worry the widows and everyone else and buying up what they can with ratepayers' money. Well, I was born two streets down from there. I've been there between what street and here 74 years. So that's why I don't want to leave here. Like, this is my home. Right? And where are you, you going to go then? On the town hall steps. Put our bed there. We've got no other place. Or perhaps go on to the, par or the beach or the park. <laughs> Nowhere else to go then, so... Well. We've drawn up a plan with the resident groups and uh, we want an overall plan, something uh, that uh, is agreeable to everyone in this community, not just a, a multi-storied uh, office block of, or whatever it is. Or well, the essence of the people's plan is that we believe in restoration and uh, not demolition. That's the uh, wishes of the people. And from the surveys we've done and from uh, the uh, uh, state of the buildings, we think that's possible. Council brought up a plan called the Town Planner's Report, and in that report, he designated most of the land, uh, most of the buildings as obsolete, and the other rest of the buildings as in need of repair. This was without any inspection. Yes, yeah, was without it? any mm. external or internal inspection. Mm. We felt it was just a quick look around the area, and obviously uh, they thought it was ripe for redevelopment. From the type of redevelopment which has taken place, it would seem that uh, they're interested in motel and uh, high-rise development. Well, I think that the East End situation, you know, is an indicator of the need to develop communities socially. And uh, the East End community, because it's had uh, people within it, with initiative and energy, has been able to become developed and the people have become aware of the issues that are around them. Now, what's required um, is that sort of help at a governmental level, and we'd like to see this come through the Australian Assistance Plan, and not just for Newcastle East, but for all communities, so that in fact people have the right and no longer have to battle for the opportunity to have a say, and that's what's happening now. You've got to fight for a say. We've had to form a resident group to protect ourselves. And, um, and mind you, I'd say that we're not the only community that's got to protect ourselves these days like this. We think that right should be facilitated and we think it can be done through the Australian Assistance Plan and through a Regional Council for Social Development. Citizen action groups and individuals, welfare, church and government bodies can now come together under the Australian Assistance Plan, working out for themselves their community priorities. This is the way people will get better access to the right sources of money and expertise to deal with their social needs. The Australian Assistance Plan is a chance for you to have a say in your community. For more information, contact the Department of Social Security, Post Office Box 1, Woden, Australian Capital Territory, or any Department of Social Security office. Wow, wow, wow.